whoever said making tomato soup was safe. I should not be left alone with a freshly sharpened knife. Good morning, everybody. Hi, it's Wendy from Bald Knob Farmstead again. Um, yep, sunglass weather. So, good morning. Hey, so today I'm doing a pre-tomato harvest, and I'll show you a couple things. So, well, I am in the garden. So, all the corn, bunch of stuff. But hey, we are here today for the tomatoes. And if you guys don't know, um, I'm Wendy. I, we run Bald Knob Farmstead in Okanagan County, Washington. So, hi if you're new. Uh, I saw that I had a few more subscribers. So hi guys, welcome to the farming family. Uh, today we are making tomato soup. So I'm going through and we have a lot of tomatoes. Um, they're kind of getting out of control, <laughs> as you can see. Like you can't tell, like there's a tomato cage here, but it's fallen over. Uh, you can't really tell the definition in between tomato plants. And you know what, I do it every freaking year. Um, plant them too close. I, I do it every year. I know better, but I still do it. Um, so we are going to also be canning a bunch of tomatoes too, but not probably for another couple weeks until we have a, uh, basically a ice chest full. Uh, that's kind of my, uh, my goal is to do an ice chest full of canned tomatoes at a time. But until then, uh, we're just going to kind of go through and pick the I call it the, the pre-harvest because this is not our big, huge harvest of tomatoes. Uh, we do have some, uh, most of these, there's, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, well, maybe, maybe eight plants of mostly early girl. I think I have a beefsteak in here somewhere. Not sure which one that is because I can't read the tags anymore. Um, so... But I'm going to go through, hi, I'm going to go through and just pick uh, some more tomatoes and get these going for the pot in, uh, at my apartment. Uh, it's Monday, so it's Monday morning, uh, which is Labor Day. It's a holiday for us. So we're up on the farm. And then tomorrow after work, uh, I'm going to be in my apartment. So I'm going to start canning some soup, tomato soup. I am a huge soup fan. Uh, it's so delicious. It's so hearty and uh, you can make it as watery or creamy as you like. I like a, a mid-bodied tomato soup. So I put about half the cream that you normally would if you like a nice creamy hearty soup. So uh, you can do it at home. It's probably easier than you think uh, and it tastes flipping delicious. So stay tuned guys. I'm gonna start picking the rest of these and show you my recipe. Well, wouldn't you know it? I jinxed myself. <laughs> um, it is Labor Day. I was going to take the whole day off, uh, but since I'm a manager of three apartment complexes, I'm trying to give my guys a day off and not call them for anything. And I just got a call of a plumbing issue. So I do have to go into work for a little bit. Uh, hopefully it'll be quick. Uh, sounds like it will be, but you know what? It never is when I say it's gonna be quick and easy. So I'm actually heading to town. I'm gonna get this done today. Um, so left my husband on the farm to do chores and I'm heading to work. So uh, <laughs> I guess I'll get this going a day early, which is fine because I could really use some nice hearty soup right now. So I'm um, heading down to my apartment. Uh, well, I will be heading to the apartments, but one of my complexes to do the repair. So. Uh, I got all my tools. I think it's gonna be quick and easy. Then I'll get to doing soup. So, wouldn't you know? It is what it is.
Yeah. Whoever said making tomato soup was safe. I just cut the tomato, the tops off the tomatoes, threw them in the pot, and the side of the knife, which I just sharpened, of course, the side of the knife caught on the edge of the pan and it twisted and I cut the inside of my thumb. So, Alrighty folks, here this has been kind of boiling away for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer just until especially the uh, celery is nice and pliable. So, and I'm gonna taste it in just a little bit. I'm gonna smash everything down, get everything incorporated because we are gonna blend this and then we're gonna add some extra goodies to it and get it ready for the freezer. Hi. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm almost done. I'm almost ready to get this put in the blender. So I'm going to blend it in small batches and then I'm going to strain it through the strainer. Uh, that's going to take all the chunks out. It's going to be nice and smooth. Then I'm going to pour it back into the pot and season it all together. So I'm going to let this boil down for another couple minutes, shut it off, let it cool about halfway before I start blending it. Cause Lord knows I'm going to burn myself. And then we're gonna get it all strained because uh, I don't want to put a bunch of salt and pepper in it now I did just a little bit uh, but if you if you start cooking it and boiling it down it'll condense and it'll get too salty plus we're gonna be adding some butter to the mix too and you're gonna blend it and it's gonna be so delicious and creamy and then when you go to whether you um, eat it fresh or you freeze it and then bring it out of the freezer in the middle of winter which I'm gonna do Put a little cream in it, fresh, uh, heavy cream or whipping cream, whatever you have on hand. It's going to be so stinking delicious. Now, some people put in uh, chicken stock. I don't do that typically because I just, I've never done that. Uh, you can add a little bit of sugar to kind of cut through the acidity of the tomatoes a little bit um, or water it down. You're going to have to, you know, kind of bring it up or down to your taste. So if it's too acidic, if it's just too, if it's not flavorful enough, add water, add chicken stock, uh, a little bit of sugar at a time, 
so just to kind of depends on your taste. Now, as you can see, I didn't measure anything because I typically don't because I know what I like, but basically what we had is uh, about two gallons, actually it was about a, a gallon and maybe three quarters, so almost two gallons worth of medium sized tomatoes. I added a whole small bunch of celery, about a third of a large onion, and almost a whole clove of garlic. <laughs> it was a very small, small, small clove of garlic. I didn't get the garlic out of our garden because it's not ready yet, but, uh, oh, and then I, I did add maybe a, go, oh, maybe a very small, maybe a couple pencil size uh, bundles of parsley. You don't wanna add too much because it gets a little bit bitter. And then um, we're just gonna add butter as we go, probably to this, to this bundle, I'm probably going to add maybe a third of a cup of butter. I know it sounds like a lot, maybe a little bit less. I'm just going to kind of taste test it uh, just to see how it goes. But it's broken down nicely. And I didn't skin the tomatoes because we're just going to we're gonna take that out when we strain it. But everything is broken down nicely. And I'm going to turn off the, the heat and let it cool a little bit and then see where we're at. Oh yeah, you guys, I totally forgot to show you this. So uh, I did some beet canning. No, I didn't, I don't think I videotaped this one. It was just a very simple uh, beets, water and salt in a pressure can. So I canned some of our garden beets. And if you guys remember not too long ago, we lost everything in our freezer. All of our chicken harvest, our lamb harvest, our sheep, everything. Everything we got, everything in that six foot freezer was gone. So this is the first time in a long time I had to buy chicken to make chicken soup. But uh, this turned out really good. I've been making this for a couple years. It's just chicken, a bunch of lentils, some uh, dehydrated, um, what else did I put? Oh, dehydrated onions and carrots. And I think just one bullion cube. And uh, this, this is going to be so, so, so good. Um, it doesn't look good out of the jar, but it tastes amazing. So... All right, this has cooled down. It's still pretty darn hot, but we'll, let's get blending. That's good. <laughs> I still have a little bit of tweaking to do to it. So some people actually put like nutmeg or so I, one of the recipes I saw that somebody put cloves in it. I think nutmeg would be really, really good. Um, just a sprinkle. And I also am going to try something this year. Um, I love French onion soup. Well, I have these little containers, little half court. Um, I don't even know what they're called. Little mini Dutch oven looking things. Um, I'm gonna put the soup in there, throw them in the oven with some cheese on top and make it kind of like a tomato cheese soup with some like buttery 
garlic croutons or something on top. I think it'll be really, really good or garlic bread. This turned out really good. I put, uh, I did end up putting a little bit more salt in it. Um, I did put a little sugar. Normally I like to use sugar in the raw. I don't like the super uh, processed sugar, uh, but I mean, it turned out good. Just, just enough, just a little bit, probably like a, maybe half a tablespoon. So it wasn't too much, but just salt and pepper to taste and have fun with it guys. You cannot screw it up. If you add too much salt, you can always water it down or put a, like a low sodium chicken stock or no sodium chicken stock. Um, if it's not salty enough, obviously put more salt. Um, and I put just a little bit of heavy cream in there too. Well, it's whipping cream. Um, we didn't actually have like the regular, I usually, I don't even know it's dairy gold. I think that I buy the, uh, heavy cream. My store didn't have it. So we have whipping cream and we're going to make butter with this later. Um, if you guys have never made homemade butter, it's a blast to do. I put probably half of this in a quart jar with a little pinch of salt and shake that thing until your arms fall off. 10 minutes, nine or 10 minutes and you make homemade butter and it's delicious. So if you have kids that are rambunctious or something, uh, have them make butter. It'll wear them out and they can make their own butter. It's kind of fun. So guys, I hope you enjoy. Support your local farmer. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for viewing. And to the viewer who uh, said that my voice was cringy, you know what? I honest to goodness hope you have a great day. I don't know why people take it upon themselves to post, to comment something like that. It's taking more of your energy to post something like that than it is mine to worry about it. I, I don't, I, it doesn't bother me, but hope you have a great day. So, all right guys, have a fantastic day. I'm gonna put these in some gallon seal meal bags and then freeze them flat in the freezer. That way I can line them all up when they're frozen in the freezer and I can just pull them out as I need them. So, I can't wait for winter now because this is gonna come in handy. And stay tuned because I'm gonna make some butternut squash soup also, probably in the next month or so when the butternuts are ready, uh, maybe a couple, three weeks. Stay tuned for that. And I hope everybody ah, has a great day. Support your local farmer again. <sighs> and I will see you soon. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I won't. You will see me very soon because I don't have x-ray vision and I cannot see through your, your phone or your computer. You will see me very soon. I have a couple things coming up. Uh, one of them is a little sad. The other one is going to be some uh, shearing of the sheep. So have a great day, everybody. Love you all. See you soon. You'll see me soon.